My name is Joel Manja and today I'll be presenting about insect cyborgs. What's an insect cyborg? An insect cyborg is an insect whose physical capabilities are extended beyond normal insect capabilities through the means of technology. Basically, an, a cyborg, an insect cyborg is a half insect and half technology, just like the Terminator. The capabilities may include video recordings, audio recordings, spying, transferring information from one place to another, and the list goes on. How does an insect cyborg work? While still in the pupa stage, one of the early stages of a tobacco hormone, the, the tobacco hormone gets electronic circuits, circuit probes implanted into it, and then growing in... Oh, shit. God damn it. Dude, I'm, I'm getting pissed off right now. Mm -hmm. I'm losing it. I'm, I swear to God. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to stop. You know why? I don't want to take a break because if I do, I'll probably forget what I was saying. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Don't fall asleep while I live, please. I'm not sleeping. Dude, it's 10.52. Holy shit. Alright. Hopefully the last one. Hello. My name is Joel Manger, and today I'll be, pre I'll be presenting about insect cyborgs. What's an insect cyborg? An insect cyborg is an insect whose physical capabilities are extended beyond normal insect, insect capabilities through the means of technology. Basically, an insect cyborg is a half insect, half technology, just like the Terminator. These capabilities may include the ability to record videos, ability to record audio, ability to spy, which is the ultimate goal, and the list, and the list of the abilities goes on. How does the insect cyborg, cyborg come into life? How does it work? While still in the pupa state, stage, the tobacco home gets electronic circuits probe implanted into it, and then it grows into a fully grown mouth whose muscles can be controlled with the implanted electronics. And then they are sent out to missions from remote areas, and then they are, con and they are controlled through GPS. The stages of an insect cyborg. The first two stages really don't matter because scientists did not try to use those two stages. This one's when it's an egg and the, on the on the dad insta larva stage. However, from the dad stage, when insertion is done during the dad stage, there is rare survival. Most of the insects die. However, in the early pupa stage, that's that's the best time to do the insertion. And this stage, this stage right here, they have the most survival and the insects go on to have good electrical and mechanical coupling. On the late pupa stage, it's still good, but not so good because some muscle tissues get destroyed. However, they still, they still good mechanical and elect electronic coupling. When insertion is done during the adult, pupa, the adult insect, there is little to no survival, tissues get damaged, and the implant shifts position. Some of the shortcomings. One of the biggest shortcomings of an insect cyborg is that insects have very short lifespan. They die really quickly, so they can't be sent to long missions. The need, the other, the other shortcoming is the need for lighter implants. Insects are so tiny, and the implants they have at the moment are really not that small. You can see them from outside the insect. So maybe in the future they'll have like smaller, smaller smaller implants that you can't see realistic like you can put them inside the insect and you can't notice them this moth isn't just swaying around it's been bugged researchers at cornell university can take control of its flight using electrodes implanted into its muscles here signals are sent to its left flight muscle to make it lift that wing different signals can be sent for it to lower its wing to lift both wings at once or to make them flap Increasing the frequency of the pulse makes the wings beat faster. If a signal is sent only to one side while the moth is flying, it will veer in that direction. Another group at the University of Michigan implanted electrodes into the brains of June beetles, close to neurons that control flight. A computer program in the device controls the beetle, and here it beats its wings and takes off when a negative voltage is sent to its brain. At the University of Arizona, researchers are putting moths in control and using them as a pair of eyes. They've found out how to intercept signals from their visual system and how to use them to make a robot move. Here, a graduate student demonstrates how the robot can be steered. 
Combining living and machine components could eventually make robotic systems more effective.